welcome to the Lose Weight, Live Life podcast. If you're someone who would do anything to lose weight, yet finds it impossible to stick to a diet, to eat less, or just what you think you should, this podcast is for you. I am your host, certified life and weight mindset coach, Claire McKenzie. Listen in to learn how to stop overeating, lose weight for the last time, and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, all without diet deprivation and self-sabotage. Hi, everyone, and a very warm welcome to podcast episode number 113, Diet Mentality and Associated Feelings and Behaviours. Before we get started, I want to wish you a happy new year. I so very much want for 2023 to be the year that you enhance the relationship with food, your life and yourself. As I say that, I'm sure some of you are wondering, what does that even mean? Well, it will mean different things to each of you, but it might look something like this. It might look like or mean you spending more time loving how you eat and liking the thoughts you have about food and eating. It might mean you loving and accepting yourself as you are, imperfections, flaws and all. And it might mean you discovering, no matter what's going on in your life, that you are gifted in having the ability to appreciate the small things in the messiness of it all. And of course, it could mean many, many other things because you get to decide what you want it to mean for you and you get to embrace creating it all. And today we're talking about diet mentality, which could very well be negatively impacting all of those areas, the relationship you have with food, yourself and your life. And so if we look at diet mentality and look at how that is impacting those areas, you may very quickly find some opportunities for you to start making some small transformations. When I started thinking about this podcast episode, I was just going to call it diet mentality. And diet mentality can be described as the thoughts, beliefs and perceptions that either linger from past dieting experiences or that have been shaped and reinforced by diet culture. That was one of the google definitions that came up and I think it's a great start. But it's not just the thoughts and beliefs in isolation that are the problem when it comes to diet mentality. It's the feelings and emotions that those thoughts and beliefs create in our body and the behaviours that th those thoughts drive us to do. That, that is sort of what the problem is when we're thinking about diet mentality. So I updated the title of this episode from diet mentality to diet mentality and associated feelings and behaviours. And that's what I want you to notice and to think about is how you're feeling and what you're doing based on the thoughts that you have around food, okay? The next part of that Google Net definition went on to state that the act of dieting is a form of trauma to the body and mind, and the impact it has on your thought patterns can be significant and long lasting. And I think it's important also to give a quick reality check and say that the act of dieting is not always a form of trauma to the body and mind, although I agree for many it is. I just want to also be clear that for some, dieting can be a positive experience that improves physical and emotional well-being and could even be potentially life-saving without the negative and traumatic impact. The problem is, the reason that dieting is such a problem is because of the layers and layers of cultural and societal and generational messaging around thin being better than fat. The concept of good versus bad foods, good versus bad ways to eat, rules around what is and is not allowed and all of that that is the problem it's where the food choices we make and whether the number on the scale going up or down becomes tied to our self-worth or our morality and that's a huge problem okay i want to try and break this down for you a little bit more thoughts relating to dieting associated negative feelings and self-destructive or misery inducing behaviors are really normal Okay, they're so normal, they're sometimes hard to spot. We don't even question them. In the academy and with other coaching clients when I'm working with them, they come up all of the time. They're so normal, as I said, most of you won't even know when you're doing it. When you are thinking a certain way because you have been conditioned to think that way through the evolution of your diet mentality. So you're going to want to be curious about what you're thinking, feeling or doing that is the result of diet mentality. So as I said, you can see how normal it is, maybe have a little compassion for yourself 
and be curious about what you could be thinking, feeling and or doing instead. And so what I want to do is just sort of share some of the ways that I see diet related mentality, the feelings and the behaviours that are associated with that showing up regularly. And I'm just going to talk through these with you and you can sort of think about which ones you maybe identify or associate with. The first one I'm going to talk about is this idea of being either on or off track. And it relates to it being either on or off a diet and it's associated with doing it right or doing it wrong. Thoughts are often around being in control or being out of control. And obviously those thoughts give you feelings of being in control and capable or maybe out of control and struggling. And the thoughts that we have around being on or off track are often layered with thoughts of not being able to have something because you don't trust yourself to not then, you know, and to coin another phrase, fall off the wagon. It's like, if I have that, then I'm going to like, you know, fall off this track that I'm on and I won't be able to get back onto it. Sometimes what we call of, you know, us being on track, whatever that means for us, it might be us eating according to a specific diet, feels so tricky that it almost feels like, it's almost like tense. We're holding our breath, trying to do it right. Sometimes we daren't let go. We daren't, you know, it's almost like give ourselves an inch of eating anything differently to what the diet is dictating that we eat because we don't trust ourselves to then let, not let everything slip. Sometimes we might be afraid to go out and socialize because the foods that are available are not in alignment with what is being dictated by the diet. And we think that if we somehow make a change to what that diet dictates, that we'll then lose it and we will be off the track. You know, we sort of like let go of that track. It's like almost like deep being derailed. And so if, if you can relate to this, then this is something that I really encourage you to let go of. This idea that you are either, you know, dieting or not dieting. You're either eating in a way that is right or that is right, wrong. And instead, just recognize that every single moment, every single hour, every single day of every single week, your life is moving forward. You don't get to, you know, get on this sort of like diet train and then, you know, come off that when you either fall off it or decide to step off it. There's no being on or off track. There's only what you just, what you want to do, what you decide you want to do next in terms of making your next eating or food related decision. So I think it's useful for us to identify if we sometimes feel like we're on it or off it and be curious and ask ourselves if we didn't think about it in that way, if we were just living our life, figuring out how we want to eat to be the weight that we wanted to be and that there's no you know, delineated way of doing it right or doing it wrong or being on or off track, what would that be like for you? One, number one, one thing for you to think about that. Something else that I see is that if you've had something that you tell yourself you shouldn't have eaten, you think that you have somehow ruined or tainted the day, the week, could even be the month. It's like you did something wrong. And so you then, that often continues that conversation with yourself is like, okay, well, seeing as I had that thing that I'm telling myself I shouldn't have had, I may as well eat all of these other things that I tell myself I can't have or I shouldn't have at other times so that I can sort of get it all out of the way in one go and then I can start again and be good, this sort of perfectionist fantasy thinking, tomorrow. This is something else that comes up a lot. It's the idea that if you eat one bad thing, then we might as, may as well enjoy eating some more bad things before we put ourselves in this like precious container of being good and to doing it right again. And there's so much diet mentality in that whole little sort of scenario that I paint, point, painted for you there. The, you know, from the very start of it of thinking about, you know, having something that we shouldn't have had or having something that was bad. I'll talk more about those in a minute, but those two are two different types of diet mentality right there. And then, of course, this idea that because we've had the one thing, we may as well carry on and have more things that we're telling ourselves that we shouldn't be having. So all of this is all diet mentality. And again, I encourage you to let go of all of that and ask yourself, what do I want? Always ask yourself, what do I want? What do I want to eat? And do I like my reasons why? 
Something else that often comes up is this idea of you've eaten something you tell yourself was wrong or that you shouldn't have done. And as I said, we're going to talk more about things that are wrong or you shouldn't have eaten in just a moment. And what you say to yourself is I'm going to draw a line under it and I'm going to start again. There is no starting again. There is no points at which we are, you know, starting, stopping, finishing the way in which we're eating, dieting. We're just simply humans showing up day after day. We're eating every day. We need to eat to survive and live. It's just purely the next best decision that we make. The problem with saying that we're going to draw a line under it is that it sort of has us almost like avoiding understanding what was going on for us. Why is it that we ate what it was that we wanted to eat that we told ourselves we shouldn't have eaten? Okay, yes, we've got a problem. And first of all, we ate something that we told ourselves that we shouldn't have eaten. But this idea that we get to have to draw a line under it and then almost like gear ourselves up to do something right the next time, again, is incredible diet mentality way of thinking. And it is totally not necessary. Now, a slight aside here, when I'm working with you and helping you understand your relationship with food, I always recommend you don't sort of like, you know, turn away from any time you eat something that maybe you regret eating. That might be a way to look at it. What I encourage you to do is to really dig in and look at why it is you are feeling what may be regret or disappointment or frustration that you ate something. Is it because you ate something that you actually didn't really want to eat? Is it because you ate something that is, you know, doesn't agree with your body? Is it that you ate something that you thought would be delicious and it wasn't delicious? Like, what are all of the reasons that you feel that regret? Understand what was going on for you. Or is it that you felt regret at eating something because of the diet mentality you have around that thing being something that you shouldn't have or that is bad for you? And in which case then, if you, unless you look at that, unless you explore it, unless you seek to understand it further, you can't move away from that diet mentality way of thinking. So it's always going to be useful for you to look at and see what is going on there for you. So one of the things I mentioned earlier was thoughts about what you are or are not allowed. This one is huge. This one, if you could decide to notice that you have a lot of thoughts around what you should and shouldn't eat and what you are or you are not allowed, and instead you move towards owning every single food decision as you choosing to have what you want to have and you either decide that yes absolutely that's a part of the way that looks like the way in which I want to be eating or you might discover that actually I thought I wanted to have that but I really really don't want to have it and you discover that for yourself you can only do that once you start to own every single food choice that you make once you start to decide that you are a grown human adult and there is nothing when it comes to food that you should or should not have. You always got to get to choose. There's no rules about what is and is not allowed. The foods that you choose to eat, the quantity of food that you choose to eat has got nothing to do with who you are as a person, how worthy you are, your moral standing or anything like that at all. We want to let go and strip away all of these rules because when we take away all of these rules, all of this sort of messed up way of thinking, you just get to have a pure relationship with food where you get to say, what do I want? What would I love? How would I love to be eating? And as a part, that's a learning process. You're not going to know right away. You've got no clue because you're so used to diet mentality and going into battle with regards to what you are and aren't allowed. Something else that comes up is starting tomorrow or being better tomorrow thinking. Oftentimes when we tell ourselves we will start tomorrow, this is very similar to the one I spoke about initially about being on or off track. It's like when we start tomorrow, it's like we are saying that something that we're doing about how we're eating today is wrong. And we don't want to make ourselves wrong about how we're eating. We're either eating the way that we want to be eating or we're learning something about how we would prefer to be eating. Another one is good and bad foods. Okay, there are no good or bad foods. Again, foods, um, yeah, we, there's just no upside to defining them as good or bad. Now, of course, we, we may know, we may say, but yes, but some foods are more healthy than other foods. Even the terms healthy or unhealthy, sometimes I use those, sometimes I'm very careful not to. It really depends how you feel 
when you describe foods as being healthy or unhealthy. So if you using the words healthy and unhealthy feels useful to you, and when you say something is unhealthy, it doesn't equate to being a bad food or you being wrong or bad for wanting to or eating that food, then using the phrases healthy and unhealthy may work very well for you. If the idea of things being healthy or unhealthy are sort of correlate with being good or bad and right and wrong, then what I encourage you to do instead is try to be very, very specific about the nutrient density of that food. So you might say this food is you know, high in saturated fat. This food is high in unsaturated fat and has got plenty of, you know, fat soluble vitamins or something like that. This food is high in this nutrient. Try and sort of get more specific about what those foods contain so that there's less of words around them that trigger emotional, an emotional response to you. That's what you're looking to do. You're looking, anytime you feel an emotional response to how you're thinking, talking about, or anything to do with food, then you want to have a look to see if there's some diet mentality type conditioning going up, going on for you that might be making things more difficult. Another thing that diet mentality does is often, you know, diets, you know, generally dictate the way that we eat. So a diet tells us that what we should and should not be eating. And often, and a part of that, has us almost like playing the game of what we can get away with, of, you know, compensating if we're calorie counting. Well, if I have this here, then I'm going to make up for it there. Oftentimes we have a whole load of food food rules about what you tell yourself you can and cannot have, what is and isn't allowed based on, you know, being clever, if you like, about how to eat within the confines of a dictated diet, but doing so in such a way that it almost like has you, you know, not being your own best supporter, but almost like sabotaging the efforts that you are putting in. So this looks like you not necessarily being hungry or really wanting something in the evening, but you notice you've got, you know, calories left over that you've not had for the day. So you have something just because you are allowed to because you know that you couldn't have that tomorrow because you would run out of calories tomorrow or something along those lines. You end up, and oftentimes the way in which we do this maybe incorporates exercise as well. So it's like, well, because I burnt these 400 calories on the bike in the gym today, I'm allowed to have this chocolate bar, okay? That, this is total diet mentality. We want to move away from all of this. Instead, we want to get you 100% owning your food choices and choosing to have what you want purely because you want it. And also, you know, actually listening to your body in terms of, you know, what your body needs and you thinking about what is kind and loving and nourishing for you to give your body. I mentioned that a part of what I wanted to talk about here today with diet mentality wasn't just the thoughts and the beliefs around diets. It was the feelings that those thoughts and beliefs create and the behaviors that you do as a result of those feelings. Oftentimes, any time that feelings of guilt or shame come up for you with regards to how you are eating, then I really encourage you to look at why it is you're feeling guilty or why you are feeling ashamed. Because I'm guessing that there's going to be some diet mentality there that is going to be useful for you to uncover. If you feel regret when you've eaten something, take the time to ask yourself, what is the cause of that regret? Why am I feeling regret that I just ate that? You know, sometimes it might be you feel regret because you ate some chocolate. Ask yourself why, what am I telling myself, okay? You can eat chocolates and you might feel regret. You can eat chocolates and feel pure enjoyment and pleasure at the fact that you've eaten them because they were delicious. You get to notice how you feel as a consequence of how you have eaten will help you understand what is going on for you from a diet mentality perspective. If you regret eating something, ask yourself why. It Regret's not always wrong. It could be that you ate something and you thought it was something that was going to be, you know, a totally 
good food, I'm sorry, using the good language there now myself, a food choice that would totally work for you because it was going to have you feeling really good and give you loads of energy and lots of nourishment and nutrition. And then you eat it and you realize actually it, it made me feel bloated. And so you, there might be a little bit of regret that you ate that, but that's not coming from a diet mentality place. That's just coming from a like, okay, well, I've discovered something new. You don't, I'd argue, you don't need to feel regret. You learned from that, but maybe you regret eating it because you're not going, you know, you're going to feel a bit uncomfortable throughout the afternoon or something like that. You're not making you wrong in your food choice. You'll just learn something for you there. Okay. Anytime deprivation comes up with regards to food and how you're eating, it's an opportunity for you to ask yourself why. Chances are you're telling yourself you can't have or you're not allowed something. Now, when I say this idea that you're telling yourself that you can't have something, so many of you will be thinking, but I can't have, I can't eat that a box of chocolates every single day because then I will be, I will gain weight. Uh, my you know, type 2 diabetes will deteriorate. So I really can't. If you are sort of in that place where you truly believe that you can't have what you want, then I want you to sort of go round that circle with yourself a few times. Is it true that you can't eat chocolate every single day or a box of chocolates every single day? It's not true. You can choose to have a box of chocolates every single day. But when you're choosing that, you're also choosing the consequences that come with it. I want you to own all of the choices. It's the quickest way for you to then show yourself, actually, I don't want to eat a box of chocolates every single day because I don't want to experience the impact that that is going to have. And so then you can see to yourself, rather than being in a position where you keep telling yourself, I can't have or I'm not allowed, actually, I don't want that. That's not what I want for me. I want to you know, eat in a way that enables me to feel better, be healthier, lose weight, all of those things. But when you're in the place of believing that you can't have what you want, you are stuck. You've got to go through deciding that you can have what you want, then maybe uncovering that that isn't what you want. And then you can start to get to a place where you're asking yourself, what do I truly, truly want? What does it look like for me to enjoy chocolate as a part of the way in which I eat? whilst I am losing weight, whilst I am managing my diabetes. What does finding a solution for you look like when you think about it that way? That is when you're going to be able to move forward and make progress. If you're experiencing misery around food, maybe you're thinking something like, life is miserable when I can't eat what I want. Again, it's another sign that you have an opportunity to go in and look at why you are telling yourself you can't eat what you want. Something else, another feeling, another emotion that comes up with diet mentality is fear. It's a fear, if I have that, I will be out of control. If I put myself in that situation, it's all going to go wrong. Again, have a look at what the story is you are telling yourself that is creating the fear that you have around certain foods. Be compassionate with yourself as you seek to understand it. And then think about what might I think here instead? What might I think here instead? What would it look like for me to feel comfortable around a certain type of food? What does that look like for me? Another emotion that sometimes comes up is self-hate. So often we are so frustrated with ourselves. It can feel self like self-hate because we are unable to restrict ourselves in a way that previous diets have dictated. We think there's something wrong with us because we can't eat according to a very specific regime. We think there's something wrong with us because we can't not eat when we're really physically hungry. We think there's something wrong with us when the reason we're so physically hungry is because our hormones are out of balance. Our body is not working effectively and isn't able to give us the fuel that we have on board in our own body fat because our hormones are out of balance. So we feel really hungry. And then we think there's something wrong with us because we find it really difficult to not eat because our diet tells us it's not time to eat yet, okay? And we can get into a whole sort of like mess with ourselves about that. This is something else for you to learn. This is diet mentality kicking in here. And I promise you there is another way to approach this, to look at you creating a relationship with food that works for you. Now. If any of these 
feel familiar to you, this is what I suggest you do. Number one, I want you to know that it's normal to think, feel and behave in the ways that I describe for many, many reasons. It is not your fault. This is normal. It's more normal if you have been dieting all of your life or on and off all of your life or if you struggled all of your life with your weight. It's more normal for what I've described here for you to feel to be familiar to you than for it not to be. Okay, it's how you have been unknowingly conditioned. The role food plays in our society and culture today, the way in which media has dictated our bodies need to be a certain way in order for us to be, you know, categorized as attractive. There's so much feeding into this. It's a complex matter. We don't need to worry about all of that. All we need to do is to start to notice it start to know that it's normal and then we can start to think about what we want to do next. How do we move away from all of this to start creating a relationship with food that feels really, really good, that is aligned with us taking care of ourselves, loving ourselves and appreciating ourselves, okay? There's so many reasons, as I said, why we think the way that we do about food, including things such as, you know, the years and decades where we were given a lot of false information about the reason that we had the obesity crisis that we did was because we were eating foods that were high in fat. And so then we had all of these diet foods come out that were lower fat, high in sugar. And, you know, as we know, that didn't actually solve things for us, did it? It made things worse. But anyway, I digress there. As I was saying, once you become more aware, you can decide what you want to do next. You can decide what would be a more useful way to think so that you feel better when it comes to your eating and relationship with food, so that you do things differently to help you create long-term positive change instead of hinder your long-term relationship with food at the expense of short-term weight loss. Three things, just three things that you might want to start with and just start with one of these. Number one, take ownership of everything that you eat and the fact that it is your choice. Anytime you notice any, I can't have, I should have, I should not have, I must have, or I mustn't have, all of those, I want you to notice it and pause and ask yourself, what do I want? What do I want? Will what I want create the results that I want? And if it does or if it doesn't, if it does, then great. If it doesn't, then say, do I like my reasons? So I know that having this isn't going to create the results that I want. Do I like the reasons why I want to have it? Number two, only make changes you're willing to make for life when it comes to your foods and eating. The changes that you're willing to make for life will evolve over time. So it might well be that right now, the changes that you're willing to make, you're thinking, well, they're not enough. They're not enough. I need to make more changes than the changes I'm willing to make. Don't worry about that. Just start with the changes you are willing to make for life. And number three, pay attention to how you're feeling and use that as a sign that there's something thinking worth looking at if your feeling is off. So if you're feeling guilt, shame, deprived, frustrated, regret, misery, self-hate, any of those feelings that I've spoken about today, and any other negative emotions, use that as an opportunity for you to ask, what's this about for me? Why am I feeling this way? What's, what's going on here? What am I thinking? So that you can understand yourself better and you can move forward from that place. Of course, this is all stuff that we do inside of the Lose Weight Live Life Academy. And I want to let you know that Academy enrollment is open. We have a special offer running if you're quick until midnight on Sunday, the 8th of January. And also just to let you know that 2023 pricing will come into effect on the 10th of January. That's only for new members. Existing members, your the pricing is always locked in or whatever it is that the, the price that you enroll at is going to be the price that you pay for the lifetime of your membership. If you're interested in the Lose Weight Live Life Academy, then please do come and find out all of the details and information at www.thebestyou.coach forward slash enroll. All right. And that's it for today. I just say have a great week. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are ready to live a more intentional life, lose weight as a part of that journey and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, then I would be honored to have you join the Lose Weight Live Life Academy membership and coach with me. The program offers different levels of support to suit you, including self-paced learning, twice-weekly calls, 
private coaching, an amazingly caring community, and lots more. Find out all the details about when and how you can join at www.thebestyou.coach forward slash coaching.